really think that this is the mark of the beast, do you? And they just got finished reading how it changes your DNA and there's nanotechnology and all kinds of crazy stuff like that that has never been tested on people. At least, because they even make Hollywood movies about th this technology, how it's like uh, completely bad and it shouldn't be allowed on the earth. But these people don't care. They want to destroy the whole earth, specifically humans. They want to destroy you us all they want everyone to take their weapon of mass destruction which the bible prophesied and said would happen and now we're able to understand why everyone who takes it will go to hell on judgment day according to the bible it's pretty deep stuff this is really how i can articulate it they just read revelation 14 verse 9 through 11 which is on my piece of paper i've been passing out and it says everyone who take it will taste of the the, uh, the wrath of god and torrent and the smoke of the, the lake of fire forever will be the smoke of the torment will rise up before the holy angels and all that it's describing the scene of of hell all the people who took the mark will be there with everyone that ever lived who died in their sins they'll all be in the lake of fire it's describing that so imagine someone reads that and it makes perfect sense when you put it all together, why it makes perfect sense. So whereas they don't really have a, a full grasp of what they're really involved with because Freemasonry is extremely compartmentalized, which is a highly sophisticated version of corruption where the people on the lower levels don't know what the higher levels are doing. And even the highest levels don't know what the highest level is doing. And even the highest level doesn't even know what their God, Satan, is really doing. <laughs> Which shows you just how secretive it all is, because even the children of the fallen angels who rebelled with Satan himself aren't even privy to what he's doing. And it's crazy because these fallen angel, hybridized, Nephilim, reptilian, whatever they're called, that are ruling the world, they seduce mankind, normal human beings, to join their ranks through money. And... Listen to, and listen to this, uh, indoctrination. They're indoctrinated. So why do Freemasons believe they wrote the Bible? Because of Jewish Kabbalah or Jewish mysticism, where they say, look, the Bible, we wrote it. You see all these things it's talking about? It doesn't mean anything it's saying. So they, they metamorphosize all of the scriptures and tell you that salvation is actually really, it, what, it's really transhumanism, what they're teaching subtly, secretly. They say, look, salvation is not real. There's no such thing as heaven or hell or God or angels or demons. We made all that stuff up. Really, this book is a secret of code. It's called Gnosticism. This is what they teach their own members. And they believe it because they've gone, because Satan wrote their handbook for twisting the scriptures. So Satan's very intelligent, second only to, to, to the most high level spirit, God Almighty, the creator, Ahaya, the great I am. The, the because it always happens when you're doing God's will or about to begin doing it. You will be confronted by Agent Smith. He'll try to turn you into himself. Don't you see? It's all metaphorical of real life. Shoving his hand in you and, and black goo starts overtaking your body. What's here? Your heart or your soul, so to speak. He's trying to infect your soul and make you full of sin, blackness, goop, disorder, lawlessness. To not fulfill your purpose, but to fulfill his. To become Agent Smith itself, himself. Smith means smite. The whole movie The Matrix is about the Bible. Because the main character, Neo, his name is Mr. Anderson. But Anderson means mankind. These names all have meanings every single time. They're not showing you these films to entertain you or, or give you action scenes and all this entertainment. No, they're showing you a biblical story in your face without you even realizing it. That, then I don't, I don't think we even realize. More important to him than we even realize. It's literally called the seal. Just like Satan has his, has his seal, which is the mark of the beast now in technology, technology, the 666 technology, which will control your forehead, which means your brain, which means your thoughts, and your hand, which means your ability to work and earn and spend money in the system. The Most High also has his seal but it's through the Holy Spirit and the Sabbath day itself is basically your 
your action of being sealed. It's even, in a sense, how you receive the seal. It tells you that, I believe, in the book of Genesis. The Sabbath day is a seal of God. It's his seal. This allowed them to make the deception of there being a Sunday law one day, when that's not what the Bible teaches. There's no Sunday law. There's not even an RFID chip, and we always thought that that was the most awake possibility or prediction. But it's not even about an RFID chip. It's about something much more sinister, sly, and technologically advanced nanotechnology. So, you know what's interesting? I even heard that the, the cotton on the end of the PCR swab tests, the cotton is actually nanocoils wrapped together to look like cotton. It's not even cotton. It's literally nanoparticles or worms, which you can see with your eyes. It's what they call Morgellons disease, where people are pulling out these fibers out of these little abrasions in their skin, these little like moving tentacles, which are actually mechanical. They're like little metal worms that can mo morph and squirm around. That's nanotechnology, and they've been inserting it into people. It's even in McDonald's food, even in the bread and the fake meat and all that. Little nanoparticles. Google it. Type in nano, nanobots in McDonald's. People have taken a microscope to this so-called food and it's fucking littered with these nanoparticles. These moving worms even. So that's really what the future is all about, is inserting nano into all human beings and then controlling them thereby basically Satan's seal. <sighs> Even when you look at the book of Revelation, if you're not someone who really wants to figure out what these terms mean, like Mark or the image or the name of the beast or the number of his name and it's the number of a man and it's number 666, it's talking about mankind's patent system, patent, numbers, patent number 666, it's talking about not an image but its purpose which is AI, not its name but its authority which is to force you to join yourself to AI, or die, or be imprisoned, or both. So, even the book of Revelation, it's not unsealed unless you have wisdom. Just like in the book of Daniel chapter 11, it says, Only the wise will understand, but the wicked will never understand. You can even tell them these secrets, because these things are literally secrets. It says they would be sealed until the end, but in the end they would be unsealed and it would be possible to understand them. Why? Because of current events and current technology and even Hollywood movies all exposing this stuff. But the wicked, you can even tell it to them and they won't take it seriously. Because to the pure, all things are pure. But to the wicked, nothing is pure or time sensitive. There's no urgency or, or hurry. There's no judgment day on the horizon, or so they think. So this is why... These people don't even want to research into the corruption. They don't even want to learn about whether Freemasons control the whole world, whether this world is governed by a corrupt group of private individuals that have nothing to do with any government but actually control every government. They don't want to learn about that stuff because they themselves are corrupt. I always wondered why other people are not as obsessively interested in uncovering these conspiratorial plans that have basically ruled over the world for far very too long, thousands upon thousands of years, to even figure out if that's true or not. And I don't even know if there was any anyone on earth who was as interested in learning about that. I know there are several hundreds of thousands who've been interested and have done the research, but for me, my whole life was put on hold as soon as I realized, wait a second, maybe the small group of people actually controls the whole world and everything we've been told is actually from their desirous vantage point, fictitious in every way. The impetus or stimulus that inspired me to ask that question to myself, with which and from which point I put my life on hold for 12,000 hours of hardcore research on my computer and reading the Bible every day for a year and a half back in 2014 from April to around 2015 September. It was after seeing this show on prison, uh, this TV show called Prison Break. It's a Netflix TV series. I never saw it when it originally aired between 2005 and 2009. I only saw it in 2014. And uh, I bet you I would have woken up back in 2005, at which point I would have been like 13 years old. 
my life would have been uh, catapulted into this truth even earlier because I've always been very intellectual in my orientation the way my mind works I want to understand things I'm almost obsessed with it I can't relate with people who aren't it's strange to me it's as if their mind has taken a vacation and not returned or maybe it wasn't installed properly at their birth I'm not sure or maybe they're selfish or corrupt in and of themselves thus corruption doesn't stand out to them I'm pretty sure that's the reason anyways the Bible is an intricate web of tests that someone must actually achieve and overcome even on an intellectual level through research and application of their mind and or being expedited expedited through having a teacher who has done that himself already I hope what I was meaning to say what does that even mean I used to think I, I knew what these people are talking about when I say that but now I have no clue because they don't even know what they're saying I've realized that lately none of them even have a conformed doctrine all these people even in the same religion they all have disagreements and don't agree on anything really it's really pathetic they're in a deception and they've chosen it over keeping the commandments and they rely on it <laughs> what I just said would be used against me by these silly Christians saying things like oh well you rely on the law you're a Pharisee you're saved by works not realizing that Christ was against the Pharisees because they weren't obsessed enough with God's laws not because they were Christ demanded that you make your whole life about God's laws these Christians would say things like, no, we, no, he didn't. He wanted us to be led by the Spirit and filled with love and faith. And you really would, if you would grill them on what they're saying, they don't even know. They're just repeating philosophy. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 5 is the best example. It's upon these five verses that the entire Christian deception is founded. The misinterpretation of them, specifically. Because Paul is using words in his letters and phrases and teachings that you can't find anywhere else in the Bible. These people have no clue what Paul is saying. So the result of that is they all form their own opinion. <laughs> Basically, they all go their own way and yet they stay together. In other words, the modern church structure is straight up wrong. I was about to say satanic or evil or misguided, but no, let's just put it, let's make it simple. It's wrong. It's very wrong. It's extremely wrong. It is a place of sin. They don't teach you to keep any of God's commandments. These people don't even know what they are. Even the ones who think they do, they still don't. Like these Seventh-day Adventists, they don't even keep the Sabbath while they're keeping it. <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? All these religions having been founded by 33rd degree Freemasons in the 1850s and 60s. They all sprouted up at the exact same time. I wonder, it's like, it's almost as if there was a concerted effort. Yeah, because there was. They all belong to the same lodge, probably literally. The same order. All of them Freemasons. Oh, who cares? It's all you talk about. That's all right. Wisdom. Would behave a certain type of way. Even he does that. When Christ was speaking to Satan, he wasn't speaking to Satan. He was interacting with thoughts that the spirit of Satan, the enemy, was basically influencing Christ to feel. Everything I've said in this video is extremely controversial. Why? Because it's the truth. This whole enemy, this whole world is an enemy. This whole enemy. It's a synonym for this whole world. This whole enemy, if you look at the word enemy as a system, this whole enemy is against God. This whole enemy is against Christ and his true doctrine. Repent. Change your life. Stop sinning. If you really gain in perception and you walk long enough on this path, 
you will actually see that this world is against repentance. Even the sweet old lady next door, she doesn't want you to stop sinning, seriously. This is, the deep, this is one of the deepest, most ridiculous examples of this. But if you even are teaching people to stop smoking weed or drinking and being drug addicts or alcoholics or whatever sin that they're doing, even the sweet old lady next door is against that. But it's not her. It's the spirit that is influencing her. Because everyone on earth is dealing with spirits. Here's the proof. Everyone on earth is a spirit. <laughs> Your own brain is influenced by your own spirit and others because the whole earth is held together through electricity or vibration or another word for you, frequency. Even Christ is the most high level spirit duplicated. He's not God, but he's the same level spirit. That's a whole nother video most people don't even understand and really need to. Everything is spiritual. Another way of saying that is everything is frequency based or vibrational. See that these are the things that is less controversial because people don't really realize what I'm saying. It's less controversial because it sounds like the new age stuff that everyone seems to be jumping on. Even Christianity is teaching new age nonsense now. New age spirituality is literally Satanism in disguise. It's all occult teachings which have some truth but they're still from the occult, from the hidden circles of Satan and his ministers deceiving them, the world, teaching you things like, you are God, Christ consciousness. It's just the next deception. It's utterly ridiculous. But the things I teach, I teach the truth from all the deceptions and I put them all into one, literally. <laughs> it's what a lot of people also think that they're doing, but they're not. They claim that they believe in all religions or parts from every one. That's exactly what I do. Only I actually know what the real truths are from them all. And there's a lot that aren't found in any of them because the Bible isn't a religion. And you have to understand the Bible in a very specific way, precept upon precept. Everything they teach from the Bible today is false. So you would need to connect everything that they are teaching, take the few good points from all of them and then connect that to the Bible. Then you have the truth. Having not been brainwashed by any religion, only then can you see the reality. And interestingly, when you go back, all of these religious and all these different nations and countries from hundreds of years ago, they all believed in the same stories of fallen angels and enemies and the divine spirit and the enemy of God and Satan and demons and angels and all this stuff. They all believed in that. It's actually why the Most High chose the Israelites from the children of Eber was his name, if I remember correctly. This was the one lineage that hadn't chosen fallen angels as their gods, at least not yet. They were later influenced by nations who already had done so. That's the reason he could all choose them only. They were the only option, in this sense, from my understanding. I might be slightly off. But the point that I'm making is that all these people on earth used to worship the fallen angels as their gods, and they never stopped. They only do it without knowing now. They cleaned it up. The gods of all of these religions are the same gods of the, of the past, the fallen ones. Christianity.